all right guys welcome back to another video um today we're going to talk about the x5sa to voron trident conversion so stick around after the intro <laughs> guys so let's officially talk about this now before i go into this i just want to say something because i just i'm seeing it pop up lately by a couple of people and i just want to get it out straight now i know i do tend to go on a tangent i do tend to go on a route but that's because i, I i'm a one take shooter so i don't like to cut up my video and do multiple edits i'm not that guy i like to just shoot my stuff raw and give you raw information live okay so I do tend to rant and go on a little tangent, but that's because I'm trying to think of the information that I might be missing while I'm talking to you guys. So if you see me pausing sometime or, you know, stuttering, that's because I'm, I'm thinking on the fly what I need to say to you guys. Now, it, it should be good practice for me to write down all the stuff and, and make it more formal like most YouTubers doing, but I don't, but I'm not most YouTubers. I'm me. I don't care about being all fancy and whatnot in my videos you know what i'm saying this is just me this is just how i like my content and if you don't like it you can find some something else now what's been what i've been seeing lately is people saying oh you talk too much what is talking too much by telling you the information is talking too much i mean it's kind of weird it's just very strange so my thing is that if i see anybody saying that in the comments i will remove your comment and i will will just basically ignore you essentially um this is my content is to give information about 3d printer and provide as best information as possible um you know and for those who know more than i do go ahead and drop it down in the comments i will pin your comments i think it's important that we share this information information you know what i'm saying we're all a community but if you're coming on here saying i'm talking too much bro you don't have to watch my video bro i ain't begging you to you know what i'm saying so just it's better just get a hike at this point you know what i'm saying my content is not for you clearly and clearly you want a dummy on a video just not saying anything clearly so again not to come on and around not to disrespect anyone but it, it's annoying seeing that all the time so it's been popping up lately and again if you don't enjoy my content and it's not for you just leave that that's all i'm saying you don't have to say anything or just don't say anything at all anyway sorry about that <laughs> um let's get back into it so all right like i was saying guys um this is an x5 sa I'm converting into a foreign trident the reason because it's easy it's fun um you know it's fun to take a printer that is meant to be another printer and turn it into a whole nother printer even better printer right um not only that but it's the highlight for those who may have trunk c printers that are frustrated with a stock printer because stock printer let's be honest is garbage you have to fix so much stuff on it for it to at least be decent and you can turn it into this if you don't mind spending a little bit of extra money to turn it into a Voron and join the Voron group. And, you know, Voron is a thing right now. Hey, why not? Um, keep in mind that I've previously built Voron Legacy. This is my second legacy I've built, right? I built one for a friend, one for myself. Um, I've built a 1.8 and a 2.4. So I'm pretty experienced when it comes to building Voron, especially now converting them from a X5SA frame. So I have pretty much good experience with doing that more than any other youtuber in youtube world right so um but i just wanted to highlight that you can pretty much take it in any direction now i did a blind joint mount so you might be wondering why i went blind joint instead of using the stock frame the way it is 
The reason is because two things. The stock frame require 240 and the weight mount, the 240 is mounted. You have an extrude, a, a 2020 on the top and a 2020 this way. I know, you know, on the X5SA, this is actually a extrusion and not a linear guide, but you get what I'm saying. This is how it's mounted. Well, on the STL for the Trident, it's a 2020, right? And the printed part requires a 2020 here and 2020 here. This is a 2040. So unless I modify this area, um, well, not necessarily the area, but unless I modify the SD, SDL to accommodate a 240 and a 2020 mount, that's a problem, right? So as you can see how this is mounted, the 2020, 2020. So the 2040 wouldn't have worked because this part would have hanged off, right? I'm not good at modi modifying SDL files or any type of CAD work. So I just decided to do the blind joint mount, which I find more appealing anyways than to use the 240. So if you're good at modifying SDLs, then you could probably leave the frame as it is and, and go ahead and do everything else. But for those who like myself that are not, <laughs> not really good when it comes to modifying or remixing SDLs, I suggest you go the blind joint mount. Anyway, the blind joint mount looks cleaner anyways. Am I, am I not right? It looks so much cleaner. Um, anyways, um, let's continue. In order to do the blind joint mounts properly, you're gonna need to print out a 10 millimeter part here, like a whole guide part, and a 140 millimeter guide part. Essentially, you just put them into, put them, mount them into the groove here, into the groove in the channel of the extrusions, and then use something to mark the holes. Maybe like a hole punch, something that you can indent a hole in, so when you put the drill bit, it doesn't walk off. But I also suggest you don't do this free-handedly, okay? Don't do a free end with a drill bit. You, it might still walk off and you might put a hole in the wrong place. So what I did here is I actually bought myself, let me kind of clear up this thing here because my camera is going all over the place now. My phone camera is just messing up. Um, so bear with me. But I bought a, a $100 Amazon tabletop drill press. So that way I don't mess up on this and the holes came out perfectly. Um, I can't remember the drill bit size I quite use, but just make sure it's big enough where you can actually put a screw through the hole so that way you can actually put an allen wrench or a screw, whatever you use to um, tighten up the frame. Um, so that's what that's what I would recommend you do. Um, I also bought a uh, tabletop um, uh, metal cutter so I can cut metal with just in case I need to cut the extrusions down to make sure that I'm following, uh, make sure that I'm you know, following the, the build as I go. So for example, if the extrusion is too long, clearly I gotta cut it just like I had to cut this to match this one. This was a bit longer, so I had to cut it to make sure I match it. So in, in, in those cases, you need professional tools to make sure you're doing this correctly. Now, the stuff I've bought so far, um, you know, I bought an extra motor because I had a spear motor from the 2.4 build. It was a three pack only use two so I just went ahead and used it instead of using all the Tronxy motors I just wanted to use a a stronger 92 ounce motor um, um, at the, uh, for the AMB so these are from stepper online they're 92 ounce stepper motor pretty thick boy beefy boy so I bought an extra one for 20 bucks off Amazon um, just to complete the pair um, using th th these three stepper motors you see for the Z I got I'm using them from the Tronxy um, kit um, um, if you wanted to, you can definitely use all five motors from the Tronxy kit. You don't have to do what I do, but if you want better motors, you can go ahead and use step around light or LDO, whichever one your preference is. Um, I also bought 350 millimeter lead screws. These are single start lead screws. So TR eight by two lead screws. The reason for this is because I wanted higher resolution on my stepper on my Z high resolution of my Z, um, plus you get less backlash with the, with the single, with the single start lead screw, just because with the four starts are, um, with the four starts, they tend to be a little bit more, um, how should I put it? Less friction between them. So basically when you, um, when the power is off on the motor, it will eat it. They easily slide down depends on how they're mounted. But in this case, because with the single start, you have a little bit more friction. 
um, so um, they don't slide as easily and they don't lose their position as easy as a four start in my experience. So that's the reason for that. And so those are 350 millimeters. I decided to not follow the builder material in this case with the Z motor. They require, well, they recommend, not require, but recommend that you use the the stepper with the built-in uh, lead screw. In this case, I'm just using couplers. I'd rather just use the spring couplers in this case. I'm just kind of saving money where I can. So in this case, I have the spring couplers with a quarter of an, quarter of an inch ball bearing in between the, shaft, the stepper shaft and the actual lead screw. I also make sure to mount them properly. So in this case, make sure you tighten up the grub nuts evenly on each side, because if you tighten up one side more than the other, it's gonna shift the lead screw here to one side and you might introduce a wobble, okay? So make sure you do this properly um, to make sure you don't introduce a wobble here. Um, the next thing um, that I love about this setup too as well is that the Voron guys are clever because they require you to use a, instead of a standard M3 nut, you're using um, nylon nuts in this case. And the purpose for that is, you know, of course, you don't want the nut to back out over time, but the purpose is to leave it a little bit loose so that way this happens. See that flex? It's basically like an anti Z wobble in a way, right? And the thing is that you never want to constrain lead screws. If they're short and straight, it's okay to constrain it. But in, in the case of the trunks, you when they're tall and long like that, you don't want to constrain them because all that wobbling effect will go right into your bed, okay, and just make your print look ugly. So it's a smart idea to leave it a little loose so that way there's some flexibility there. Very clever. Um, also, there's this another bearing here. Um, I can't remember the name. I might just insert the name in the video. But this is to help the bed pivot when it does its uh, triple Z kinematic um, adjustments. So this is nice, this is very nice, very tasteful here that they did that. Very, very clever. Now, I, I would say the rat rig, the way the rat rig bed is mounted, it's kinematics is just slightly better because it has like a ball joint thing that it just sits on, which is pretty cool. But this is the same effect. There's no di big difference, honestly. Same effect, so it's pretty cool. Um, so what if I, I bought? Um, I bought five linear rails mgn 9 h linear rails one here one for this z one for that z as you can see it and one for this z right here and i have one up here but amazon messed up on one they send me two i'll show you guys it's ridiculous they sent me instead of linear rails they sent me two freaking six millimeter rods so someone must have messed up on the order so i'm gonna have to send that back so I'm sending it back to get my money back. So I went ahead and just because I didn't want to wait till they refund me and then I repurchased. Um, I went ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, and ordered another 400 millimeter um, linear rail MGN9. Okay. And so this is my dilemma now. Um, it won't fit. <laughs> As you can see, it won't fit. And because they don't make linear rails in very odd sizes, um, they only make them in 50 millimeter increments as far as I know. Now, if you guys out there know or are aware of any other company that sells custom linear rail sizes, let me know. But as far as I'm aware, they're always in 50 millimeter increments. So like 350, 400, you know, 500, 550, kind of like that. Um, in this case, this 400 millimeter, I'm going to have to cut off a little bit off of it because as you can see, it just doesn't let me fix that. It just does it won't fit and it needs to sit flush right there. So whenever I cut it, I'll let you know what the size end up being. But for right now, I gotta cut it for that to fit. Same thing with this MGN12. Um, um, I gotta cut this down so it fits on the x-axis because it needs to sit at least close to being flush with here. So this is where it's gonna sit at. And right now it's too 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 long it's way too long so i got to cut out a little bit just look a little bit off of it in order for it to fit right and the reason why i have to cut again because there's no custom size so i have to order a size up and then cut it down a little bit to match the the required size for this custom setup now another benefit with the frame being blind jointed is because i retain my build area so the build area for this that I, my goal for this build area is 330 330 by 330 okay um so 
Um, that's my goal, my build goal. So the reason why I'm able to retain back that, the Tronxy build area is because the frame is pushed out 20 millimeters, okay, on each corner. So the frame is now wider to accommodate that bed. Um, if I didn't do that and I did a stock way, um, you know, this say I left the, the Tronxy frame stock, I would have lost on the build area because keep in mind, <clears throat> the Voron uh, motors, the A and B motors are inside the frame. With Tronxy, the motors are outside the frame at the back. So because the motors are inside the frame, if I had kept the stock frame, I would have lost out on about 30 millimeters easily. Okay, so I'd have to shrink my bed to maybe 310 millimeters, if not 300 millimeters. But because the frame is now widened, because I went to the blind joints, frame is now widened, 20 millimeters in, in the corners, I, I retain that 30 millimeters uh, um, uh, space. So it ended up working out that way. So just want to put that info out there. So it ended up working out. So keep in mind, it's a custom build, so I couldn't do a live stream on it because you know it's custom i'm trying to figure it out as i go once i figure it out and make the last video i'll be a little bit more detailed a little bit more organized with what i'm saying and for those who want to attempt you know um you know they can get all the information they need in that video so but so far yep i got the feet mounted i'm using the compressor feet um you, i think they recommend another feet now but you can still use a compressor feet so in this case i really like the compressor feet how it just squats down stay in place um but yeah, but this is it, guys. This is my my progress so far. It's looking looking really really good. It's it's a bit of a beast. So it's the biggest printer I'm attempting to build so far, and I'm pretty happy the way it's turning out. Everything is squared, so I'm waiting for some few more parts. Um, I'm definitely not using the stock Tronxy bed in this case. I will be using a six millimeter cast aluminum ATP five plate. Um, 750 watt silicon heated bed in this case SSR all that good jazz like like the build of material call for and um, again just really super excited now this will be theme venom um, I think it's appropriate to do a venom theme so into theme being you know black white and red um, as venom is black white and red in, in nature um, red being the mouth you know his mouth is red or pinkish or whatever you want to call it but the back the vinyl sticker I'm going to be using is going to clearly see black white and red so I'm so excited I think it's going to be a nice look um, so like I said guys I'm I just wanted to share it with you guys that you know yeah there's a four on trident custom coming um, on this channel and I'm excited to share it with you guys again like and subscribe share <clears throat> Again, guys, you know, I'm just doing this for you guys. I'm doing this, you know, for free. I, you know, I said I, I'm not looking to gain any money here. If the money comes, it's welcome. But that's not the, the reason for this channel. I just want to share my findings, my passion with you guys and just give just throw the info out there. You know what I'm saying? That's that's really it. You know, I'm happy to just be able to share my passion and my excitement with 3D printing and all that with you guys. That's that's the purpose of this channel. So, yes, guys, just again, like, subscribe, share. There's more to come. This is part one. So, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.